Hi friends, welcome back to Backyard Homestead. Um, today we're going to can some ham and bean soup. An easy beginner um, canning recipe. Um, so if you are interested in canning or learning how to can, um, watch this video. <laughs> I'll show you step by step. We're going to use the stove top canner today. So I'm going to turn you guys this way towards the stove and we will get started. So we're going to need a jar lifter, some uh, a funnel, at least one. We're going to need some jars. I've got some hot water that I already boiled um, to pour into the jars, but I do have some ham stock that I had canned, so we will probably use that up first. Um, I let the beans soak and rinsed them all and got all those weird, great northern beans have like a weird clear shell and they sometimes will float up and so I like removed as many of those as I could. I've got some water here heating up for my lids and um, what else? Oh, I gotta go get the jars out of the garage. Okay, we're back, sorry about that. All right, let's rinse them through. Now you're gonna put about a, cu um, a cup of beans into it each quart, and I like to make them quarts. That way, me and my husband can share it if we want. Or he's a pretty big eater. <laughs> He'll eat a whole quart, no problem. Okay, so let's get the stock pot here. What are you guys canning this month? Put it in the um, comments if you love to can or if you're new to canning and intimidated by it. Don't be. We're gonna show you step by step how to do it. It's blazing now. Let's turn her down a tiny bit. I don't know if you guys have gas or electric, but I love the way those smooth top electric stoves look, but I much prefer cooking on gas. It is just, I don't know. I don't like cooking on electric stoves. Okay, so my husband busted the salt grinder. <laughs> so, we're gonna just pour some salt in. Oh my gosh, they saw the cat again. All right, I'm back. Okay, so I need to go get the jars and we're going to, um, I think I have some that are big mouth and some that are small mouth. I can't find my little thing that has the magnet that gets the jars out of the water. And it was in this and it's like totally gone. And I don't know where it went. Anyways, I have looked in every drawer and I cannot find it. So I'll just have to use some tongs or something to get them out. Because I like to get my lids hot and I get them wet. Anyways, let me go get the, oh, and here I've got some hot water. I did can some ham broth with, um, like two weeks ago that we're going to use, but we'll have to use some water too, because I don't have enough of the broth and who knows how many jars we're making here. So let me put this away and let me go get the jars and we'll wash them. All right. I've turned you guys around this way. I'm going to fill the canner with cold water because... Everything's cold out of the fridge. So let's get that filling. They say that you don't have to um, sanitize the cans anymore. I'm just gonna wash them with some soapy water and let them sit here to dry out. Or, actually, I'm just gonna wash them with soapy water. It's okay if they're a little bit wet. Um, Sometimes I'll put them in the dishwasher and that does sanitize them because it's super hot. Okay, that's probably enough water for this beast. And it's heavy. It's a big boy. Dogs are barking at something. They're always barking at something. Probably the neighbor kid. Because he's always screaming. 
when I do my jars, I always cut it right around here and just leave the plastic on the bottom part. It's in my pan that's boiling. It's not actually boiling, but it was. I turned it down. Because we don't really need it to boil too hard. You always want to check the rims. I'll get this in there. You want to check the rims for any cracks or chips that might um, um, cause it not to seal or not to seal properly. You don't want to have lifting. According to USDA now, you don't have to sanitize them if you're going to be pressure canning. I know some people still like to. So let's just give them a good rinse. Give them a good wash. And they'll be clean and hopefully the alcohol spray sanitize them. I've never had a problem with any growing mold or anything like that. I've only been canning for two years though, so could be just that I have, but I've canned a lot of stuff in that two years. And in fact, I love canning. I think it's so fun. Like, I never thought this is something I would want to do or be doing, but I'm telling you, I love it. And it is so fun. And then just something about having it on the shelf. Hey, I need a quick dinner. Um, I've even done some of the Rebel canning um, recipes. And they've all worked out just fine. Like the burrito in a jar where you put rice and beans in it. And meat. Those actually are really good. But it's not a USDA uh, approved because it has rice but you know really um, it's worked out just fine and every jar I've opened has been fine but you know we're gonna show just the safe USDA approved ones right now okay we'll get these all rinsed and then we'll get started there's a hair on my arm or something you don't want any hair. That's why I put my hair up. I don't want any hair in our food. That's disgusting. I hate when I watch videos. This is one of my pet peeves, by the way. I hate when I watch videos and ladies have really long hair and it's like hanging in their food while they're trying to cut and prep food. Um, that's just so gross to me. So, I do have really long hair. But when I'm ready to cook, I put it up. Because who wants to have hair in their food? That's why a restaurants are supposed to make you wear hair nets and beard nets. <laughs> so you don't get hair in your food. I'm not sure how many of these we're gonna need. Like I said, whatever the amount of beans, I think it's um, one cup of beans for a quart. So we'll see how much that fills up. Now these beans have already soaked, so we could probably get away with doing a cup and a half. Because I said I wasn't gonna let them soak overnight and then I ended up being so tired that I did let them soak overnight. So, they already did soak overnight. Now, if you've never had pressure canned uh, meat or like beef stew or anything, oh my gosh, you have to do it. The meat comes out so tender. Absolutely delicious. I pressure canned um, corned beef stew, corned beef, cabbage, potatoes, carrots, and it's delicious. So I've got these big bowls and they're kind of in the way, but we'll find a spot for them. Maybe we'll move them here. Is that hot? No, it's not hot anymore. Okay. It's hard when you have a tiny kitchen and not a lot of room. Like I have my island table behind me, but um, it has some 
stuff I need to put away right now. So the ham, let me see if we can put it where you guys can see everything. I chunked up the ham in pretty good si um, size chunks. And the beans, like I said, have soaked overnight and they're in this strainer. We've got celery, carrot, oh, and here's our onion. And I try to chop everything fairly large because if you if you do little tiny small pieces, then they'll get mushy when you're pressure canning. So, whoops, I did it about like that size. So, and the celeries are about like that. And the onions, well, that one's bigger than most of them are about like that, like that. Okay, anyways, let's get started. So, we're gonna need a jar. We're gonna need that. We're also going to need the debubbler. And if I had my little magnetic lid to get these out of the water, but I can touch the water, so it's not too bad. Okay, so we're gonna start off doing a cup of beans in each one. And that seems to be plenty, yeah. All right. It's a little over a cup, but you know what I mean. <laughs> so we're gonna do a cup of beans. Okay, now I do have more jars to fill obviously, but we're just gonna do these so I can show you and then we'll come back. So next I'm gonna do the ham and I really wanna put a good amount. So I'm thinking a cup of ham also like that. And let's see if it's too much. Huh. Some of these chunks are too big. If it ends up being too much because we wanna have room for our veggies too. Nope, I think that's perfect. All right then, we'll just, and I did leave some of the fat on this ham because it's going to cook down and give it flavor. So, since some of it doesn't want to fit through the funnel, we'll do it this way. It's gonna get my rims dirtier, but that's okay. We're gonna clean them. Oh, that's another thing you're gonna need is some white vinegar. I know some people don't um, use vinegar on their lids or on the rims, but if you're cooking with meat and anything with grease, I suggest using the vinegar. Whoops, we dropped a piece. It's okay, the dogs. Well, the counter's clean, I just cleaned it, but the dogs will eat it. Um, the vinegar helps cut the grease and clean off any yucky stuff and clean off the rims so you get a good seal. Um, you don't want to compromise your seal. So, all right, one more. I'm showing you how we do them and then I'll fill up the rest so you don't have to, you know, we don't waste time here. <laughs> Just in case you're new to canning. Okay, there's our cup of beans, our cup of ham. Let me just get that other piece. And for these, I'm thinking maybe a quarter, maybe a little more. We'll see. And then I'll get out a third. Because we'll want more carrots than that's a third of carrots. Yeah, that's probably good. I don't have more carrots, so these are all I got. And we do want to make more, so I think a third's good. If I end up having more, I could put more in. That one has a few more. Let's put a few more in that one. Okay. And celery. I think like a little bit, a little under a third. Like we don't have a lot here. And I'm not going to the store. We're doing this pantry challenge. We're using what we have. And we may run out of celery. Uh-oh. <laughs> okay, that's enough of that. Now let's do onion. 
I got a lot of onion. I think I still have three pounds, so we're good on onion. Now, the ham is salty, but the beans are really bland. So I am going to add salt, but I'm only going to add, I think, half a teaspoon instead of a teaspoon. So, all right, here's our five jars. This is all we're doing for right this second. Let me set this aside and we'll show you how to finish the rest. Let me wash my hands. some ham stock. So I canned a few jars of ham stock, but not enough. So what I thought was we could do half ham stock and half water. Give them a little bit of flavor. So let's see if I can get her open. Woo! Well, that worked. Mm, uh oh. I don't want to mess up the lids. I need a little jar thing. Okay. So I'm going to do about half. And there's a little fat in there. It's okay. It won't hurt nothing. Like I said, we still got more jars to do. And we're definitely going to run out of celery. My husband loves celery, so I'm not sure. We may have some beans that are just carrot and onion. <laughs> Let's see, a little bit more. Oh, yeah, I'm making more of a mess here with this than anything. All right, let's set that aside. We've got our hot water here. Well, it was hot, it's been a while now, so it's cooled down a little. It's already pouring out. So we wanna fill it to one inch of head space. I usually just measure it to the bottom of the jar rim. I'll show you. But I'll also show you how to measure with your little debubbler. Definitely gonna have to boil some more water. Running out of water. Okay, so basically to here is one inch of head space, but if you use your handy dandy debubbler, that would be one inch. So technically, you would want this not touching, but we haven't debubbled yet. So let's do that. So you want to get in there and debubble. I think you can see. You get any bubbles or air out, and that also will make it go down a little, the uh, water level. All right, let's get in there. Like this one might need a little more water. Just get in there with your and really get the bubbles out so you don't have any air. I think that this canner will hold six or seven quarts. So I'll do a couple more and then we'll get her started. And like I said, I'll probably have to bust out the electric one too. Okay. I don't think I did this one yet. Anyways, we've got all that out. And I have made quite a mess under here, so let me try to clean that up. Okay, now I've got some white vinegar in this little pump here. So let me get a paper towel. And you can use a, re a regular wash rag or anything too. I've seen people do that. Anyways, I like this little pump because I can close it 
that stays right on my counter. Anyways, you want to wipe, wipe these real well. I always spin them and then go around the top too. And I did see something on the top of this one. And then just fold it over. I like to keep mine really wet so it's really, we know for sure getting that stuff off. Also, this is when you can also check for any dents or dings, anything like that. Okay, so now we've got it all nice and clean. I don't have my little magnetic thing, but this water is not boiling hot. So you put your lid on, you put your ring on, and you only want to tighten it finger tight. That's it. Don't over tighten. And we're going to set it right in the canner. And we're going to do it again. And I, we'll see how many it holds. I think it's six or seven. So we'll fill like two more. And then we'll get her started. And I don't wrench down when I'm tightening, even though if it looks like I am. I just have big hands. <laughs> What do we have there for? Now for quartz, they're going to go 90 minutes. Come on, get on there. Sometimes you got to go backwards and then it'll get on. Um, they're going to go 90 minutes and you need to look up for your altitude. I think it could fit one more, maybe two. Yeah, I think we could fit two more. So I'm going to go ahead and do two more just so we have it full. Okay, we've got them full. Let's do our half of uh, ham stock. Oh, and I forgot to put the salt in, you guys. See? You can always add salt when you're cooking them. You don't have to add salt. Um, but I'm going to on these two. And this is canning salt. You can buy salt that's for canning and pickling. You don't want to use iodized salt. Here's half a teaspoon. I'm just going to do half a teaspoon. Now I could open each of those and do it, but we can always just salt it when we heat it up too. So that is what we will do. And let me get some water because our little pitcher thing's empty. So I'm just going to get some water in this. I'll be right back. The chickens heard me open the door. They're like, oh, are you bringing me something? They're demanding. We have very spoiled chickens. Okay, let's get the debubbler. I'll set it there. We'll debubble. You know what else I like about these soups in a jar is they look pretty in a jar. You see all these veggies and the beans and the ham. Okay, let me get another paper towel since this one's yucky. What are you guys doing, huh? Underfoot. They are always underfoot. Watch out. All right, one more time. I can see something on this jar. A chunk of ham fat or something. So let's just do that. All right, and I always wipe the sides too just so it's nice and sealed. We can make sure that we're getting a good seal. I 
Okay, I'm gonna move these aside and this so we don't melt them. I'll go ahead and fill it. It is heavy. Let's get it positioned here. Hopefully I didn't put too much water. Oh, it's getting pretty full. I might have to dump out some water. Yeah, we don't want it to be over the jars. For water bath canning you do, for pressure canning you don't. <laughs> so, let's get some of this water out. That should probably do it. Let's see. Now I know some people say don't put a, can a, j a jar in the middle. But I always have and I've never had an issue, so if you don't want to, don't put one in the middle. I need a towel. Okay, good, you guys can see. Okay, we've got the canner full with, let's see, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven quarts of soup. Get it positioned good on the stove. Okay. Now on the lid, it has water spots, but you want to make sure the seal's good and that this thing, you're supposed to look through it and see if you <laughs> make sure it's not stuck or anything. And so this pressure gauge has one, two, and three. And I think that one is for a thousand foot and under or sea level and under. And for me, I'm at, we're at like three. 3,500 elevation. So I think we use number two. Last time I, no, last time I did two, but it's supposed to be three. So <laughs> it still came out okay, but still, you wanna do uh, the pressure for your altitude. There we go. And um, I wish I had the All-American where they latch on, but once this is closed, it's gonna build up pressure well, once we close that part, but so never ever try to open it or anything like that. All right, we're gonna start the stove. And I've got it on high. So we wanna make sure it's on venting. Let me come in closer. See this little thing here? That's venting, the steam. So we're gonna let it come to a full boil. It'll start to spit out steam. Hey, hey, Chloe. Chloe. Hold on one second. Had a knock at the door. <laughs> it was a uh, delivery. So back to the steam thing. This is where it steams. So we leave it on this and then after it steams, we set a timer for 10 minutes and let it fully steam. Then we move it to number three for us. But we're gonna go back to steam. We'll let this come to a full boil until it starts steaming and we'll be back. So I just wanted to show you guys. So it's starting to steam, it's boiling, you can hear it. But see, it's just a little bit. We wanna, so we don't start the timer yet. We wanna make sure it's a full on steam. So a couple more minutes and I'll be back. I just wanted to show you guys the difference. Like it's just now starting to steam. We don't want to set the timer until it's really steaming. Okay, so I wanted to show you. When it starts making that whistling noise, and it's really venting good and heavy, now we set the timer for 10 minutes. All right. So we're just going to let it do this and then in 10 minutes we turn it to whatever number is for our altitude and like i said we're at like 3500 so we need to go to three so if you're at like sea level or a thousand or below you do one and i think two thousand or below you do two and then you want to keep it at three here and so you'll have to regulate the temperature usually about medium or a little higher than medium it'll for my stove it'll stay right at three 
Um, I just wanted to show you what kind of canner it is. It's a tea ball. Um, it's supposed to be like a five system security, but really it just has this latch. <laughs> so I don't know why it says that. And it says easy to use. It's in Spanish, but I got it from Amazon for a hundred bucks. Um, and this thing has been awesome. I've canned quite a bit in it and haven't had no problems for a hundred dollar canner. Um, the electric one was more than that. So uh, I'm pretty proud of this thing. Of course, if I had $600, I would buy an all American canner, but I don't. All right, we'll be back in 10 minutes to put it on the number that we need and let it build up to pressure. And we'll show you that. All right. Our timer, oops, our timer went off. It's been 10 minutes. Now let's see if I can do this without burning myself. Yes, now we just turn it to three and it's gonna start building up pressure right away. I'll stand here just for a minute to show you guys. Um, and like I said, we wanna keep it at the three, you know, around the three here, but not into the red. I wanna go in the red zone. <laughs> so, let's give it a minute. Let it build up some pressure and we'll be right back. Okay, taking about five minutes, but it's almost up to the three. So we're gonna go ahead and do our 90 minutes. Oops, so 90 is what? One hour, 30 minutes. Okay, one hour and 30 minutes. And we want to keep it at the three. So I have it on high, um, but I might need to turn it down a little. So I'm just going to stay here and see if it keeps climbing past the three, then I'll turn it down a little. But other than that, it's that simple. All you got to do is just check on it. I check on it like every 20 or 30 minutes or whenever I come in here, just to make sure it's not going above the three. Um, but really it's, it does its thing, you know? So it's about there. So I think I want to keep it at that. So I'm going to turn it just to that. I think this is where I kept it last time and it stayed perfect. Now it is going to make that noise and it'll get louder, but that's nothing. That's normal. And see it's staying right at the three. So I think this is perfect. And that's like medium high. So medium and high and then that's like medium high. So basically just keep an eye on it. But it does its own thing. So it's staying at three. And as you can see, it's not climbing more. It's built up the pressure that it needs. So it just needs to go for 90 minutes. So we'll be back when it's done. So once the 90 minutes is done, we turn off the stove, we let it sit, and it'll slowly come back to having no pressure. Don't ever try to open it or touch it. Just let it sit, and there's a little thing right here, and then that will pop down and then you'll know that it's completely released. But even after it pops down, they say to give it at least another 10 minutes. So we let it just completely come down to pressure by itself, or come down to no pressure <laughs> by itself. So we're gonna let it go for the 90 minutes. Then I'm gonna turn the stove off and I'll be back when the pressure is down to zero and we can open it up, okay? Okay, I just wanted to show that it was still climbing. So I ended up turning it down to medium. And it's staying right about in the middle of the three. So that should be perfect. All right, we'll be back when it's all done and the pressure has come out of it. All right, everyone, I'm back. So it's all down, there's no more pressure. We're going to slide it 
try to hold the camera at the same time. Hold on one sec. Let me set you down so I can lift the lid. Actually, I think I could do it. You want to lift the lid away from you? Let's just set it aside. Carefully. Okay, it is very hot. There's our jars. Now they're still going to be bubbling. So you want to get your jar lifters and lift them out. There's our beautiful ham and bean soup. Oh, and it's already popping. You hear those pops? <laughs> So what I do is I'll set it here, cover it with a towel, and I will leave it overnight. I don't touch it at all until the next day. It looks like we have some siphoning because there's some oil and stuff in the water. Um, but what I do is I let them sit overnight. Then the next day, I'll take the bands off, make sure everything's sealed, and uh, wash all the stuff off but see we had some siphoning for sure it smells like ham and bean soup in there anyways that's it we just canned ham and bean soup they'll still bubble for a little while and that's fine i like to just cover them so we'll cover them with this they are hot oh, my doggy's having a little coughing fit here he's an old man are you okay, buddy? You all right, boy? Huh? You want to say hi to everyone? Hi, he's an old man. He's my old man. Yeah. Anyways, so that's it. We canned our ham and bean soup. And look how nice it looks. And it sounds like they're all sealing, so everything should be good. Thank you guys for joining me in this video. Now we've got a few more to can. <laughs> so I'm gonna start another batch. But thank you so much for joining me. And if you like this kind of content, please subscribe, hit the like button and the notifications, the bell notification, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Have a good night.